What's up, you guys? I'm back today with another video. So, you guys, today I'm about to show you how to make my stuffed shepherd's pie twice baked potatoes i think that's what i'm gonna name it i'm not sure yet i don't know what to call these but they're so good they're super easy to make and yeah if you want to see how i put them together stay tuned all right you guys so this is what we're going to be using to make our shepherd's pie stuffed twice baked potatoes i think that's what i'm gonna call it i'm not sure okay so first off i'm making mine with some ground turkey you can use ground beef, ground pork, whatever kind of ground meat you want. You can use whatever kind of ground meat you want. I'm doing ground turkey. You can do ground beef, whatever kind of meat you want. All right, I'm not going to use this full pound. I'm going to use half of this most likely. All right, we're going to need some sweet cream salted butter, some garlic. For the mashed potatoes, we're going to need some of this triple cheddar, some regular cheddar, a little bit of milk. We're going to need a yellow onion, some better than bouillon, the garlic one, some of my seasoning. If you don't have my seasoning, there's always going to be a link in the description box below to uh, buy my seasoning as well as my cookbook that is out. You guys go support, go get my cookbook. It's really bomb. I have some really good recipes in there. All right. So, but if you don't have my seasoning, you can use some adobo and pepper. We're going to need some chopped chives for the mashed potatoes. We're gonna need a little bit of all-purpose flour to build our gravy. Right here, I have some frozen peas and carrots. It's really all about preference. Some people do their shepherd's pie, cottage pie, whatever you call it, with um, sweet corn. I'm gonna put peas and carrots in mine. Right here, I have some scallion, green onion, some um, cream cheese for our mashed potatoes. And of course, you guys, we have some baking potatoes right here. This is just some rusted potatoes. It's only two of us, so I don't need a lot. So what we're going to do is, per four potatoes, we're going to use half a pound of the ground turkey or your ground beef, if that's what you're using. All right, so we got our potatoes here. I'm going to go ahead and wash these off. And then after we poke some holes in them, we're going to wrap them in tinfoil and then roast them in a 375 degree oven until they're fork tender. All right, so our potatoes are rinsed off. Get some tin foil going. All right, into the oven these go. All right, so my pan is heating up. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a little olive oil because we're using ground turkey. If you're using beef, you don't need to do that. But of course, turkey is a leaner meat. All right, next I'm gonna throw in the ground turkey. I'm going to cook all of it because I'm really not gonna just have half a pound of ground turkey in my fridge, but I am only going to use half of it. All right, so. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with some of my seasoning, leek and bio, okay? If you don't have my seasoning, use some adobo with pepper. It's not gonna be as complex, but you know, it'll be pretty close. Next, I'm gonna add in my um, yellow onion and green onion, saving a little green onion for garnish. This smells so good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and let this cook down. This smells so good. All right, now we're gonna add a clove of garlic. That is, of course, crushed um, garlic. A teaspoon of the better than bouillon roasted garlic. Mm, whoa, that smells so good. Mix this up. I am feeling this frozen crushed garlic. 
It smells amazing. Now let's work on building our gravy. This is a tablespoon and a half of all-purpose flour. Go ahead and cook this into some of that fat. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Now to that, I'm going to add a cup of water. Reduce the heat and let this simmer for like, let's say like five, ten minutes. Until the gravy um, comes together. Alright, so this is looking good. You see how that gravy developed? Nice and thick. You guys, I forgot to add in... Some Worcestershire sauce. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a tablespoon. That's just going to deepen the flavor. But this is pretty much done. So I just mix in that tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce so and I'm going to uh, turn off my heat and just let this cool down until we get the potatoes together. But this looks so good. Nice and juicy, y'all see that? Nice and juicy. It's gonna be really good. All right, you guys, so our potatoes are done. As you can see, the knife goes right in. Look at that. These are done. You're gonna have to let these cool down some. Y'all, my potatoes are kind of small. Usually I get the bigger potatoes, but I wound up doing a curbside grocery pickup so I wasn't able to physically pick the potatoes. So I ordered a pack of bacon potatoes like you've seen. And I thought they were going to be bigger, but look at how small they are. So I'm saying this because when you make your recipe, I'm sure your potatoes will be bigger. So just double my recipe, all right? Especially for like the mashed potato part, just double the recipe. Because these potatoes are small, but this is what we're working with, all right? All right, child. So let's work on these potatoes. Since these are smaller, we're not going to completely completely cut these in half. I'm just going to slice off some of the top. Put it in my measuring cup right here. This is the cup that I'm going to mix my um, mashed potato mix in. These are still a little bit warm, y'all. I ain't even going to lie. Ooh, these are still a little hot. Got to let these cool down some more. So I'm just cutting the tops off. Not completely in the middle. Then I'm going to scoop out the centers. But they hot, so I'm going to need to let these cool down some more. So when you're scooping out the center, you don't want to scoop all the way down to the bottom. Just the center. It's just form like a cup in the middle for you to put the filling in. So don't go all the way to the edges and don't go all the way to the bottom. See? This is what you want. And just take your time because you don't want to break your shell. Okay. That's another one. Now here's the last one. As you can see, you guys, it's hot. So definitely let them cool off more than I did. Well, that's a good one look all right so i got our potato cups here yeah hopefully your potatoes is bigger than mine because mine are small a little i'm sorry side okay now here are our um potato filling to that i'm going to add a tablespoon of butter a tablespoon of the cream cheese Two tablespoons of the milk, some of my seasoning, not too much, a teaspoon of the chives, and we're going to go ahead and mix this up. I was going to use my hand mixer, not my KitchenAid. It's not really that much, so I'm just going to do it by hand, just until it's nice and silky.
What I'm doing is I'm just taking the tines of the fork and just pressing it against the side of the mixing bowl. And that's how I'm getting the lumps out. Boom. All right, so here's our mashed potatoes. Look at that. They look so nice and creamy, nice and juicy. Mmm. You guys see, see that? Now to this, I'm going to add some of this triple cheddar. Not a lot because I don't really have that much. That right there should be perfect. Mix that up. These are some bomb mashed potatoes, y'all. So good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look at this. You can eat this by itself. Y'all see that? Hmm. Yum. So that's the mashed potato part. Let's go get our meat. All right, so here's our meat and gravy mixture. Nice and juicy. Y'all see this gravy? So good. To this, I'm going to add a little bit of the peas and carrots. Not a lot. Because, you know, I'm not making that much. I put it in right here because they're frozen. You don't want them to get mushy. So this right here is good. Y'all see that? Yummy. So now we're just going to start filling up these little cups. Yeah, these potatoes are so little, but it's fine. It's fine. First, we're going to go in with the meat mixture. Mm. Whatever's left over, you can do like a, just a bake with the meat and the mashed potatoes on top. These are gonna be overfilled. This one, my side collapsed a little bit, but it's all good. This smells so good. With these leftovers, y'all, you could just put this in a baking dish with the meat on the bottom, potatoes on top, cheese, traditional style, you know? You don't want to waste it. We don't waste nothing over here. I'm just tasting these mashed potatoes. They're so good. Now let's put the mashed potatoes on top. Yum, yum, yum. We're gonna overfill these, y'all. Yeah. So I know your potatoes gonna be bigger. Just double my recipe. OMG. So y'all know I gotta hit you with the close up here are the potatoes, how they're looking. Okay, now we're going to top this with some of this um, cheddar cheese. Look at that. You cannot tell me this is not going to be good. A little bit more. Look at, oh my gosh. Look at this. Now we're gonna put this in a 350 degree oven and just let the cheese melt. OMG, you guys, here are our potatoes fresh out the oven. Oh, 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 look at that. Let's go ahead and put our green onion garnish. Mm. Oh, y'all, look at that. Oh, my gosh, we have to try these, y'all. Let's see. How does it look? Oh, look at that. Um. Mmm. 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 Yeah, it's so good. 
Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Buy my season app. Buy my cookbook. It's out now. Don't forget to do you, boo. Bye, guys. Hmm. Whoa, don't slip up or get cut. Why not, man? I'm coming for that number one.